Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Poria. Welcome to the Early Birds Weekly Explorer webinar. Uh, this webinar series is run by Early Birds team to promote disruptive leaders, especially innovators, mostly focused on startups and scale-ups who have a minimum viable product or more. Today, our guest is Arthur Argyropoulos, who is the founder and CEO of Prosia Technologies, an Australian fintech with worldwide patents in new automatic check-in technology. That means without QR codes to help streamline uh, the delivery of new and innovative digital services and fulfill the government digital economy strategy. Uh, Prosia helps users connect with brands they trust. Um, and in terms of Arthur, he has already founded multiple startups in cybersecurity, mobile payments, and managed services. Uh, Arthur's experience includes 14 years career in Hewlett Packard, 20 years as an entrepreneur and tech investors. Arthur holds a Bachelor's uh, uh, of uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineering from University of Melbourne. Um, Arthur also uh, is a co-founder and CEO of uh, another company called Cab Fair, a Melbourne-based fintech company specializing in mobile payment solutions for taxis, uh, limousines, and uh, interestingly, they are also Tyro's biggest customer. So today, Arthur will be sharing uh, Prorosia's story for 20 to 25 minutes, and then we will have uh, uh, time for questions. Uh, you can type your questions through the chat box. Uh, in the meantime, let me stop sharing and let me quickly run uh, the video uh, to introduce the company. So give me a second. When Jess shops online, her favorite brands know how to make her feel special and valued and can make attractive offers. But when she enters a store, it's a different story. Only by checkout does the brand identify Jess. But it's too late to give her that special treatment and the store is missing out on many upsell opportunities. The only way the brand can know her shopping interests is to connect with Jess at store entry. Others have introduced a special code to manually scan as you come in, but that requires a lot of hardware. And now there's a queue at the check-in. Wouldn't it be better if Jess could just walk in like she does today and automatically connect? Enter Parousia's automatic check-in system so that Jess can have the same experience in-store as online. Parousia technology inside the store activates the brand app as soon as Jess enters. A whole new shopping experience is now possible for Jess and the brand because she's instantly connected to her online profile. And with Parousia, she can control her privacy in-store to be recognized or to visit incognito. Jess's ability to control her omni-channel privacy is key to building her trust in the brand. And 74% of retail executives say that trust and loyalty are very to critically important in the short term. Plus, it's easy to implement. First, install Parousia technology in your store or use your existing beacons. Second, integrate the Parousia applet within your brand app. Finally, activate effective in-person marketing with attractive offers and new in-store services. With Parousia technology, sales staff can be called for assistance with a simple tap and even be briefed for a more personalized and enjoyable experience. You also get access to data analytics to see your store's performance and to better understand your customers' behaviors from check-in to check-out. Bring the offline world online with Parousia Technologies, enabling the omni-channel with a simple and low-cost solution. Okay, so now I welcome Arthur and uh, I will hand over to you. If we can go to the first slide, Chris, that'd be great. Yep. Okay, here you go. Uh, 
Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Arthur Idropoulos. I'm the CEO of Barusia Technologies. Um, we provide technology that uh, help users connect to the brands they trust. And uh, we do that with an automatic check-in system that we've created and um, filed worldwide and been granted worldwide patents for this technology. Um, as you saw in the video, you know, imagine a world where your app automatically comes alive and checks in a person when they enter a place of business. And imagine the things that you could do um, if that was possible. So today I want to talk about, you know, why we exist, what we do, how we do it, the use cases uh, that uh, I'll discuss today will be um, transportation, retail and healthcare. And there's many others, but we'll just focus on those three today and uh, how you guys can get involved. Um, and if you uh, stay till the end of the presentation, you'll uh, hear an offer that we've put on the table for your consideration. And, uh, and we'll have about 10 minutes of Q&A at the end. So our mission is we help users connect to the brands that they trust, because trust and privacy are key, as was mentioned in the video. So why we exist, the problem that we solve is that check-in is the on-ramp for all in-person digital services in the digital economy. Um, we uh, have now experienced the year of COVID and check-in has been brought to the fore and it matters now. Um, so we've been working on this for a number of years. So the problem is that Today, in-person check-in is not fric frictionless. It relies on users to manually do something. Think of transport, think of healthcare, think of um, uh, in-person situations. You have to go through a turnstile. You have to tap a card. You have to open an app. You have to scan a QR code. And we know going through COVID, and, and most of us have seen this or done this, is People bypass the manual check-in. They forget or they just tire. Next question. Yeah. So what we do is, Barusia is a software as a service. Um, it uh, provides a user experience that's the same as online, but in person. And, and that's important because we need to make the experience, the user experience, the same, no matter which domain the user is in, online or in person. So our technology does five things, and I'll explain later how to integrate our technology. But simply put, we uh, perform an automatic check-in on entry um, into a physical space. And once that occurs, then there is a, an engagement event, an automatic in-person session between the business and the user. And then there's an exchange of some digital information or there is some sort of um, possible transaction that occurs. And then the user can walk out of that environment, in-person environment, and an automatic checkout occurs. And that could facilitate, if we can go back, Chris, that would facilitate a what we call proximity payments. Um, so as the user walks out, just think of an Uber uh, trip where you just get out of the vehicle. You can deliver that sort of functionality in a store, in a healthcare environment, in your use case. And so we call that proximity payments. It's also known as connected commerce or the physical web. Next one, Chris. So how is it different? Well, we stri uh, streamline the delivery of in-person digital services at speed and at volume in the dig uh, which the digital economy demands. And um, so how do we do that? Well, we don't need a pin code for a user to enter on a device. We don't need the user to scan a QR code. There's no need to even start the app um, on the phone, your app having our technology in it, that the phone can just remain in the purse or in the pocket of the user when they enter your business. And as I mentioned earlier about proximity payments, there's no terminal required um, to do a transaction. Chris mentioned that I also run another company called Cabfare. 
and we have many thousands of FPOS terminals out in the field, and I know firsthand just managing that asset base costs a lot of money and um, has got a lot of uh, overhead for the business. So we strive here to deliver payments with a device that every user has. Next one, Chris. So how do we do it? Um, onboarding is as simple as adding 10 lines of code uh, to your mobile app and deploying low cost, uh, low energy Bluetooth beacons at your locations. Typically these beacons cost about $20 US and they last for three years, they're, they're battery powered. So the first step is you go to GitHub, you, you get our SDK, you integrate it in your uh, app with about 10 lines of code, you deploy the uh, Bluetooth beacons at your locations, say your office or your uh, vehicles uh, or on train carriages, wherever you want these events to occur. You create new user experiences um, because of the automatic check-in, the automatic uh, session and the automatic checkout. And then you review user in-person analytics, which will give you a wealth of extra data that you could add to your online data about user behavior and, and yeah, user um, workflow through your um, business. Next slide, please. Let's take a um, uh, uh, use case example. In this case, transportation. In our discussions uh, and focus groups uh, locally and around the world, the aim here is to, is to achieve frictionless transportation in the digital economy. So the benefits are convenience. Uh, users can just get on and get off transportation services with an automatic payment at checkout. No need to tap on and tap off. No need to go through a turnstile um, at a train station. Um, safety, so we can digitize all the experiences on the, in the transportation system such that the user can then have information about where they are and what service they're on and they can share that with their friends and loved ones for safety purposes. Privacy, passengers can uh, choose if and when to reveal their identity or just travel on the service incognito. And of course, the future is going to be uh, driverless uh, taxis, for example, uh, what's no, also known as robo taxis. And this Australian fintech has got uh, worldwide patents for passenger automatic check in and check out with automatic payments for this specific use case. Next. Uh, healthcare. Again, our discussions and focus groups. Um, so suggest that this market, this segment wants to enable the next wave of uh, uh, my healthcare record. Think of uh, the convenience of a patient booking uh, to see a doctor online, automatically checking in when they enter the GP, have a session with the doctor and then leave the general practice or the hospital and there's an automatic checkout and an automatic payment. Privacy, the patient authorizes access of, of their uh, digital health records or remains incognito. There may be situations in healthcare where the, pet, uh, where the patient wants to remain private. Accuracy, or well, medical advice, test results, scans added by the medical provider during that automatic session that I was talking about earlier. And um, the Medicare app can do a whole lot more. Uh, the integration of claims processing, immunization records, and vaccination passport, which may be relevant given the current circumstances with COVID. Uh, retail, again, here, with, as you saw in the video, which was the retail use, use case, the aim here is to deliver a more connected experience for customers uh, inside stores. I use my phone when I go to the supermarket um, uh, to look up uh, information and Google things. Well, what about giving a better experience than just that? So here the convenience is simply walking into the store to connect automatically and, and to shop 
privately or reveal my identity to get extra benefits that the retailer wants to offer me. And there's the engaging uh, experience that can be realized, which is known as online to offline or O2O or omni-channel. Uh, smarter offers that are relevant at the moment, personalized, localized across social, online and in-store. So you have a consistent experience whether you're sitting on the couch or you're walking in the same store using the, uh, the app provided by that uh, retailer. And of course, uh, retailers have spent a lot of uh, energy and a lot of money on automatic checkout. With our technology, it's simple technology and the user simply walks out of the store to pay, to streamline the shopping experience and to achieve what Amazon Go has, has tried to build, but at a lower cost and available to small retailers, not uh, the size of uh, just Amazon Go. Next slide. So we built this technology and privacy is a key issue. So we built it with privacy by design. So we looked at uh, the GDPR um, and in, the, in Europe and the Australian Privacy Act. And there's three main components. And just to put everyone's mind at ease, our functionality, our contribution is as a data processor working with uh, uh, an app host, or let's say a retailer or a health um, provider or the government. So the only information about the data subject that we see is pseudo anonymized data. I can go into that in more detail uh, during the Q&A. Next slide. So how to get involved. Um, we'd like to give this forum uh, uh, members uh, an offer and uh, we're happy to offer um, uh, three free six month trials where we'll supply the Bluetooth beacons and the Parousia SaaS service for free. Uh, the milestones are contact me or contact uh, Early Birds um, by the end of the end of May with your use case and outline how you think Parousia technology can help you achieve your digital economy goals. Uh, we'll select three from the candidates and and um, sometime in the middle of June, um, well, on the 18th of June. And then uh, we'll run the trial and we'll report back to this forum um, the results of the trial um, around November uh, this year. Next slide. And I'll open it up for Q&A um, for this session. Yeah, this is great, uh, Arthur. Thank you very much for your presentation. And um, everyone, you can definitely type your questions in the chat box, uh, or you can raise your hand uh, to speak, uh, and I will allow you to do that. Uh, uh, so this, this is really good, Arthur, because um, while you were talking, I was just thinking, uh, I, I was not aware uh, about your your offer, and I saw that, I said, ooh, I could already think about actually one of the potential uh, use case. Uh, I will talk to this company that we partner with. Uh, they're running a very big event in Sydney, and uh, there could be an opportunity to, uh, I think there is an opportunity to use this technology, even big conferences and events as well. Um, so I will check and come back to you on that one. In the meantime, we got a question from Surin. Uh, does everyone needs to download the app to be able to connect to a business? That's the question. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, the app has to be on the phone. Um, it's not the Parousia app. It is the business app. So let's say the healthcare app. Um, whatever the brand has um, as an app, and our SDK is in that app and that phone um, detects the Bluetooth signal of the beacon in the business, in the location, tells the app, which tells the SDK, which creates the event, which is a check-in. Okay, great, great. Uh, the next question is how do you uh, anonymize the data? 
Yeah, so in our environment, there's, as you saw in the slide, there's three components. There's a, a data controller um, and, and the data processor. Um, so where the data process, data controller is in the case of a healthcare app, it could be um, Joe's medical business. They would know who the patient is. Uh, the Padusia side, uh, we would not know who the patient is. We have, um, we only get the installation ID or uh, some other data that the host app will allow us to then say, well, this person did this individual, this installation did these events. We cannot determine who the person is. Okay, so you will have some kind of installation ID which you wouldn't know what does that that means mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the person. Yep. Most probably the company or organization who is using that app, they might know depending on what a user has uh, shared. Yep. Uh, so most probably you wouldn't have any of those. Uh, no. In, in fact, the trials, uh, we did a trial in Boston. Yes. Uh, a little while back for the first generation technology. And in that trial, we used an, uh, a taxi app and the user, the passenger, didn't have a login. So the taxi company didn't know who the user was and we definitely didn't know who the user was, but all these events do uh, actually work and it's designed to work that way. Great. So our next question coming from Joe, uh, he's saying excellent presentation uh, to start with and then the question is, what sort of cost would a normal store, say Country Road or Kmart, need to spend to implement this? Yes, so um, the costs are to purchase the beacons. We don't, we don't sell beacons. Um, we've partnered with, um, with a company called Estimote. Mm -hmm. uh, Estimote supplies Bluetooth beacons. They cost about $20 uh, US each beacon. So there's an upfront cost to deploy the beacons. They last for about three years. You manage them via cloud services to change settings and so forth. Uh, on uh, our side, um, we have uh, a number of tiers of pricing, um, but certainly if you've, if you've got a small business that does you know, around about 5,000 check-ins, say a month, all right, we have a um, uh, and we're going to be changing our pricing like, uh, so shortly, but we have uh, an amount where we don't charge you and most SMEs will probably operate in that space. Yeah. Um, uh, thereafter, we'll be charging uh, a couple of cents per check-in. Okay. Okay. So basically your, your model is more on a, uh, up to a limit you don't charge and then after that limit you charge per uh, check in, check in. Yep. Uh, and check out. Uh, uh, check in, only, only check in. Only check in. Okay, yep. great. Um, okay. On, the, on our website, we've got some use cases that people can go on the pricing page and see yeah. where they fit in. And it's, it's not going to be much. And if you're an SME, it's probably not going to cost you anything apart from the beacons. And, and that's our contribution to help startups get up and running with this sort of technology. Yeah, yeah that's great. So in terms of beacon, if somebody is, I know that, um, I think Joe has specifically asked, you know, as an example, if we look at Country Road um, a store, I think it's a me medium-sized kind of a store. So how many beacons do you think that they need to have? Um, for, uh, I, would, I would think they could probably do the whole store with one beacon, um, but if they want granular data, they might put three. So... Um, there might be different department menswear, uh, um, uh, other, other departments um, that they might choose to have. So they might put one in each department and one at the front door. Yes. So then they can, they can see the individual check-ins as the, as the user comes into the store and moves through the store and how they move out. And that by, might give them some insight about, like, uh, like the insight that you get on uh, Google Analytics. Yes. about how users navigate through your online uh, uh, store. Yeah, okay. So you mean that more beacons uh, means more accuracy in terms of the location? 
Oh, no, just more uh, granular data. Okay. Uh, the accuracy, uh, it's, not a, it's not a matter of uh, where you are in the store and how accurate that is, yeah. but it's more about where did the users go and how much time did they spend in each location. Yeah, okay. Now, that's great. The next question is, what is the impact on business to create and maintain their app and how does this link to their suppliers? Uh, that's, that's a tough question to answer because there's a lot of components there. Um, for those that already have apps where users interact with them online, yes. this, is a, this will give those uh, companies greater uh, scope and, and wider view of how their customers behave. Yes. and do behavioral um, analytics. So it, it, acts, it adds an extra domain. Now, for those who don't have an app, right, to get up to speed, get an app up and going and then add this technology, that is a bit of a lift. Uh, however, there is the no-code community, which is pretty low cost uh, to get up and running, and we're working with that community as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, the next question is, um, if I walk into a store and have my Bluetooth turned off, I will not be able to connect. Is this correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And um, it, it, it is as fundamental as that, as simple as that. Uh, but most people do have their Bluetooth on. And you may have noticed that phones these days, when you turn off your Bluetooth, you go to bed, you wake up in the morning and miraculously your phone's got its Bluetooth on because there's headphones, there's smart watches, that, uh, smart speakers that need to connect to devices via Bluetooth. So Bluetooth will evolve such that it's probably on most of the time. But certainly app designers need to build in redundancies um, and in the workflow. So when there's no check-in because something didn't work with the Bluetooth, that they need to have a manual process or a secondary process to enable the check-in workflow. Great, great. Uh, thank you very much, Arthur, again for, uh, I think there's one more question. I'll just quickly take that one. For cashless transactions, is the responsibility of the customer to record the transaction? How do store check these? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, the, uh, in our technology, there's no, it's not necessary that a uh, financial transaction occurs. We just create a series of events yeah. that could result in a transaction. It, those events are recorded by the host app, the retail app, and the passenger uh, on their, uh, sorry, and the uh, customer on their phone, which they could reference in the future. Okay. No problem. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I have lost my video, it seems. Uh, but thank you very much um, again for your great presentation, Arthur. I could see already people uh, responding with great presentation. Uh, so really appreciate your time. And I'm sure that um, uh, people will either reach out to you directly or reach out to Jeff or myself. Uh, and then we will come back to you with uh, with appropriate questions. Uh, so thank you again for your time and uh, you have a good day. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, if you need to contact me, um, uh, either Parusia website, parusia.com or LinkedIn, uh, send me a message or certainly Chris or Jeff. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Arthur. Talk to you then.